Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. For the next 30 minutes, you will travel back to a time when radio controlled the transmission and the mind created all your fears. Welcome to Classic Dark Radio. Roma Wines present Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you a star, the actor whose recent portrayals in Lost Angel and See Here, Private Hargrove have been so much admired, Mr. Keenan Wynn. And so with the remarkable events of which Joe Eisinger has written in his novel, The Walls Came Tumbling Down, and with the performance of Keenan Wynn as the society chit-chat columnist who signs himself... Darcy. We again hope to keep you in suspense. My dear Captain Griffin, on a date which I am sure we shall always remember not quite without pain, I was sitting in my office at the Morning Post composing with my customary wit and brilliance my daily column of Cafe Society Chatter. When Miss Susan Finch, my devoted but mentally retarded secretary, poked her head into the room, ran her tongue nervously across her dental brace, and announced... There's someone outside to see you, Mr. Darcy. Oh, tell him I'm on my deathbed. Tell him there's a priest in here now administering the final sacraments. Now go away. Well, I couldn't tell him that, Mr. Darcy. He's a priest himself. Did you say priest? Well, perhaps I am in articulo mortis and didn't know it. Very well, Duchess. Ask the good father to come in. Uh, yes, sir. Please come in, Father. Thank you, my child. You are Mr. Darcy? I am Darcy. What can I do for you, Father? My, you've changed. Yes, it's been so many years. No, oh, we've met before. Uh, St. Francis's parochial school. And your name was... Uh, Patrick O'Donnell, and I... Uh... Father Walsh. Oh, but of course. Well, I'm so glad to see you again, so very glad. Well, Patrick, I, I know you're a very busy man, but I don't know where else to turn. It was three nights ago, late in the evening, when he first came to see me. Who? Well, a man I'd never seen or heard of. He demanded that I give him the Bibles. What Bibles? I don't know. And when I asked, he smiled as though it were a game and said, The Bible's marked E.B. I feared the poor man might be deranged, and I suggested that perhaps he'd better come again in the morning. He rose from his chair in anger, saying he would give me three days to help him find the... find... Uh, the Bibles. No, not the Bibles. That I would help him find... The walls of Jericho, or else I would regret it. Did you say the uh, walls of Jericho? For the past two nights, he's been loitering outside the gates of the churchyard, as though watching to see who, who my visitors are. Uh, you say he came to see you three days ago and gave you three days in which to... Uh... Yes, yes, yes. Well, now, what did the police say? I, I, I haven't reported this to the police. I, I can't go to them. I've been warned not to. By this madman? No, 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 by my bishop. You see, when I told him about it, he refused to credit it, said it was a, a figment of my imagination, and warned me not to speak such nonsense again. I see. Uh, Father, I'm sure you've nothing to fear. You don't believe me either, Oh, eh? of course I believe you. Now, please let me visit you tonight, Father. We'll talk further about this. There are many things I'd like to talk to you about, as, as we did years ago. Yes, years, years ago. Very well, my son. I'll expect you at eight. You will come, won't you? Only death could keep me away. And now, in this brief intermission, let us picture this scene. 
A scene beneath a radiant Caribbean moon at the fashionable Hotel Nacional de Cuba in Havana, Cuba. An American dinner guest has just raised his glass in a toast to Havana, its traditions, its beauty, the superb dinner and wine. His Cuban host replies, True, the traditions, the scenery, and the food you enjoy, they are ours. But the wine of which you speak so highly, that is of your country. We must import it. It is the famed Roma wine made in your own California. Yes, it does surprise many Americans that California produces wines, Roma wines, of such uniformly superb quality that they are imported to many foreign countries as special occasion luxuries. But millions of Americans do know and enjoy the excellence of Roma wines daily with meals and when entertaining. These millions have made Roma America's largest selling wines. They know, too, that Roma wines are amazingly inexpensive for wines of such distinguished character. That's because here in America, you pay no high import duty, no expensive shipping charges. Yet Roma brings you wines that combine age-old winemaking skill with modern scientific testing and quality control. All this for only pennies a glass. So, for maximum enjoyment at low cost, ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California, for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage, Keenan Wynn, In the Walls Came Tumbling Down, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> And so, my dear Captain Griffin, with a punctuality I had not exhibited in years, on the stroke of eight I found myself standing before the high iron gates of St. Francis Churchyard. I must admit that Father Walsh had intrigued me with his fantasia of a man seeking the walls of Jericho. No response. I tried the door. Swung open, and I stepped into a musty, dimly lighted hall. Father Walsh? Father Walsh? You at home? There was no answer. I crossed to the door of the study and threw it open. First... First I could see nothing in the darkness, and then... I saw, suspended from a low beam in the ceiling cord of his robe knotted tightly about his neck, Father Walsh. There was no urgent need to cut him down. He was quite dead. That's the way I found him. I came in to give him his cup of warm milk, and that's the way I found him. Who are you? I'm his sister, Catherine Walsh, my brother. He never would have committed that sin. But who? Have you called the police? <laughs> yes, I... Aren't you from the police? No, no, no. I'm, uh... I was his friend. You're, you're Darcy? Yes. Now, tell me what you know about the Bibles before the police get here. This afternoon, after he saw you, a woman telephoned. He talked to her for a long time, and when he hung up, he said he remembered now about the Bibles. Forty years ago, he took care of a sick vagrant. The poor man died and left to my brother two Bibles. A bum left Father Walsh two Bibles 40 years ago. Well, do you know where they are? Yes. One is now packed away upstairs in the attic, and the other is... That must be the police. Now, don't say anything about the Bibles. I'm asking you to trust me. Call me tomorrow at my office. I'll, I'll let them in. Oh, come right... Oh. I... Father Walsh is expecting me. Well, come in. Who are you? My name is Patricia Behrens, and... Is something wrong? Why should anything be wrong? I, I, I don't know. It, it's just that... Well, I had an appointment with Father Walsh, and When I... did you make this appointment? Early this evening on the telephone. I'm afraid I'm a little late. Indeed you are. Father Walsh is dead. Dead? Oh, but he can't be... Why not? But I've been searching for him for so long, and now... Are you sure that you were looking for Father Walsh, or was it the walls of Jericho? I... I don't know what you mean. No? If Ernst... Did any talking about... Well, he had no right to... Ernst? Ernst who? Now, look, my sweet. 
You'd better tell me what you do know, because Father Walsh didn't just die quietly with a smile on his lips. Father Walsh was murdered. Murdered? Look, you, you've got to trust me. Well, I'll hate myself for this in the morning, but okay. Let's get out of here. Yeah? Mr. Darcy? Mm-hmm? Good morning. This is Catherine Walsh. I've got the Bible I told you about last night that was in the attic. And the other one is... Uh, Miss Walsh, don't say anything more. You come to my apartment at three this afternoon. 24 Sutton Place. If I'm delayed, the doorman will let you in. And shall I bring... Oh, yes, yes, by all means. Bring the uh, book with you. Very well, Mr. Darcy. I'll be there. Yes, Duchess? Hey, Mr. Ernest Helms is waiting outside. Ernst? Well, prod him in, Susan. Prod him in. All right, Mr. Helms. Uh, Is this or is this not your card, sir? Uh, My name is on it. Uh Uh-huh. Then it is your card. My name is Darcy. I'm the columnist for the Post. Uh, What can I do for you? Uh, Please. My name is Ernst Helms. I deal in rare books. I've been commissioned by a client to find two Bibles for a certain collection... You can trust me, sir. I'm experienced. I'm reliable. I am uh, discreet. Yeah, that is how I am. Well, very well. And you want me to help you find the Bibles? Uh, No, Mr. Darcy. No, not quite. I want to buy them from you. Oh, then you've come to the wrong man. I'm not a book dealer. I'm a newspaper man. I might be able to help you find something. Uh, And uh, what is your fee? How much cash do you have with you? How do I know you have the Bibles? Well, I didn't say that I did have them. How do I know you know where they are? Uh, you don't know anything. How do I know you aren't lying to me? How do I know you aren't a fake, a fraud? Now, be... now, now, uh, you'll get nowhere by flattery. You haven't got the Bibles. You don't know where they are. You are a swindler, a thief. You're, you're, you're trying to rob me like everybody else. I know you, you are a vicious, degenerate fiend, a contemptible foul. Uh, don't, I'm please. sorry, brother. Okay. okay. <laughs> No. Hey, what happened? Oh, just a little thing. You've got some water there? Yeah. Oh, now, wait outside, Susan. Uh, what? Uh, oh, you, you're all right now. Uh, Mr. Darcy? Yes, you're fine oh, now. I'm Ernst Helms, please. I come from Prague. Well, how do you do? Uh, my shirt, it's off. What happened here? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, an accident? Oh, uh, you're fine now. Here, let me help you then. Uh, your coat. Oh, yes, thank you. I... My money. Where's my money? On my desk. I... Uh, you'll leave it there if you want the Bibles. The Bibles marked E.B. Uh, here. Uh, please. Uh, how soon will you deliver? Three days. Uh, please. Uh, I can trust you. Please. Uh, Well, that isn't the point. As long as I have your money, Mr. Helms, I think I can trust you. Good day, Flat Top. My dear young lady, look. I arrive here punctually for my appointment with Mr. Serko Hodakis for 2.30. It is now close to 3. I have read the entire contents of Time, Life, Esquire, Captain Billy's Whiz Bang... Oh, Mr. Darcy? Yes. Waiting long, I'm terribly sorry. Come in. Sit down, please. Well, thank you. Now, Mr. Darcy, I shall be brief to the point. I'm an attorney. I have a client named Ernst Helms. He visited your office this morning. How do you know that? He told me so. I manage his affairs. He also told me he gave you $1,800. I simply want you to tell me why he gave you that money. Why don't you ask Mr. Helms that question? Very well. Blunt and to the point. My client has paid out large sums of money to swindlers, yes, trying to locate certain books. It is my duty to see that he is now protected. Well, Mr. Helms paid me that money for a book which I gave him. Uh, What kind of a book? A Bible. You gave to Mr. Helms a Bible? Yes. Good Lord, a Bible for $800? Well, I suppose Helms knew what he was doing. I'm going to wash my hands of him one of these days. You're telling the truth, Mr. Darcy. You really gave him this Bible. I'm a liar if I didn't. So I was a liar. 
But that was the best I could do on short notice. I had no wish to become involved in the tiresome litigation and one perhaps which might draw the attention of the police to me. I left Mr. Hodega's office as quickly as possible, raced home, and it was with some anticipation that I learned from the doorman that Catherine Walsh had arrived and was now in my apartment. Come right in, Darcy. In time for tea. Well, well, Captain Griffin, Detective Lucas, and if my memory does not fail me, and unfortunately it does not, Detective Regan. Are you gentlemen waiting for a fourth for bridge? We've got our fourth. In the other room, Darcy. I took three small, reluctant steps into the darkened room. It was lying on the floor on the other side of my bed near the small table on which my telephone stood. It was the frail body of Catherine Walsh. Well, Darcy? Uh, Griffin, I find this very embarrassing. Yeah, I know just how you feel. But right now, Darcy, you must make an effort to tell me the whole story. And believe me, my friend, it better be good. My story, you remember, Captain Griffin, was good. In fact, it was so good that after two hours of tortuous questioning, you agreed to release me on my promise that by evening I would come to you with the full meaning of the Bibles and the walls of Jericho. Straightening my tie and looking jaunty and attractive as usual, I awaited the arrival of the lovely one. Well, here I am. Look, Darcy, I'm frightened. Uh, Stop acting like Jane Eyre. Please don't be harsh with me now. Well, they weren't very gentle with Father Walsh and his sister. Darcy, I'm so frightened. The manager of my hotel told me that he got a phone call from Ernst Helms asking him to put his trunk and luggage in the storeroom. He's gone away and I don't know what to do. Try telling me the truth. Yes, yes. I'm sorry I started the whole thing. His letter said there'd be blood and murder. He was right. Whose letter? Elias Behrens. You mean the Elias Behrens, the artist? Yes. He was my grandfather. I started to write a biography of Elias Behrens to show the world how he was forced to suffer and live in poverty. What the greatest and most celebrated painter of our time went through to... Well, during my research, I found this scrap of letter. Mm -hmm. Here, read it. Let's see. Live, uh, Live only to finish my greatest work, my only mural. And there will come the day when men will again shed blood for the... Walls of Jericho, as did Joshua and his hosts. But only in my Bibles will be found the key. He who reads each word of God will uncover the sweeping vision of the walls of Jericho on the wall of my hovel. Glory be to God and cursed be all men. Well... That mural is priceless. But no one knows where my grandfather lived or died. He'd run away from a hostile world. I retained Ernst Helms, an art dealer, to help me in my search. And Elias Behrens was the poor, unknown vagrant that Father Walsh took care of and buried. Yes. We traced the Bibles to Father Walsh, but... Oh, Darcy, I'm so frightened. I I can't find Helms, and I don't... Oh, you don't have to bother to look for him. The police will do that for you. What do you mean? Uh, He has one of the Bibles. Then why doesn't he come to me? Because that mural is, uh... Well, it's finders keepers in a case like this. But Helms is now a fugitive wanted for murder. Oh, And the other Bible is undoubtedly nowhere on this earth. That's what poor Catherine Walsh was trying to tell me. But we know that Elias Barron's left two Bibles to Father Walsh. Yeah, all right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! Father Walsh, of course, I'm a dope. I remember a warm and lovable little thing he used to do that the whole neighborhood knew about when I was a kid. He always used to bury a Bible with the souls he buried. So, one Bible he kept, which is now in the possession of the killer of Catherine Walsh, and the other Bible he blessed and buried with a dead man. But that means... That... Precisely. We don't know where under what name Barron's died or where he's been buried. Joshua. Joshua. Give me that. Give me that. Now, let's see. J.J. Joshua. Joshua. The son of Nun. Joshua Nun. What? How do you spell it? Oh, N-U-N. Oh, pray that my womanly intuition is not playing me false. Come along. Where? To see if there isn't a Joshua nun buried in Father Walsh's churchyard. Oh, Darcy, we shouldn't be doing this. Why not? 
cross says Joshua Nunn. And if I'm wrong this time, it won't be wasted effort. I'll simply crawl into the grave myself and pull it in after me. Here. Here, I've struck it. Give me that crowbar. Quickly, quickly. Come on. Oh, dear. Dear. Patricia, the Bible. We found it. All right, Darcy, stand where you are. Oh, Griffin, I've, uh, I found that other Bible. You found ten years in the pen for body snatching. Well, Captain Griffin, this time, as you must remember, my story was even better. And you agreed that now with one Bible in our possession, we might succeed in smoking out the killer who had the other Bible. The entire story of Elias Barron's and his walls of Jericho broke into the press and a veritable epidemic of wall scraping struck the city. It was on the fifth day that a phone call from Serko Hodekas asked me to see him at once on a matter of great importance. Yes, Mr. Darcy. Helms called me twice. I tried to trace the calls, but it was impossible. All he would say is that he didn't kill anybody, but that he had the other Bible. Well, how'd he get it? And he wouldn't explain. He said he's sending it to me so that you could find the mural. But the condition is that, as his attorney, I protect his interest in the sale of the mural. He has a right to that, even though he is a fugitive. Do you agree? I agree. Good. Here is the Bible which came in this morning's mail. The Bible he gave me was very old. On its covers were the initials E.B. I turned to the book of Joshua... In the fourth paragraph of the sixth chapter, two words have been underscored. Seven rams. What's what's marked in the other one, the one you have? Here, I'll read it. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and it shall come to pass... Mm Mm-hmm. And the words seven priests are underscored. Hmm. Seven rams and seven priests. Not much to go on, is there? Enough. The word priests tell us where the Bibles would be found. Now we're left with two sevens and the word rams. Where would you expect an artist to spend his last declining days? Right, Greenwich Village. And there you will find, in Father Walsh's parish, a street named Ram Street. And I'm sure that at 77 Ram Street, you will find the walls of Jericho by Elias Behrens. Patricia, my sweet, swoop up your trumpet. The walls are about to come tumbling down. Yeah, this is where the crazy old coot used to live. Joshua, he called himself. Mm. Uh, not quite the Savoy, is it? And this is where a great artist was forced to... Well, let's mm. let's get on with it. The mural must be hidden under the paint of one of these walls. If it is, Mr. Klinger here will find it. What's that? Oh, don't let that frighten you, miss. It goes on day and night. Building a subway right under it. Yeah, it doesn't feel very safe. Uh, perhaps you'd better start your examination, Mr. Klinger. Yes, I start making my test now. For the next three hours, Mr. Klinger, the expert, worked without pause, taking specimens of almost every square foot of wall space, examining his findings for oil tones under his microscope. Finally, bending low over a sample... I think, I I don't know, looks like flesh tone, oil, maybe just another layer of paint. I must take four or five more specimens of that same layer. And how, uh, how will you know if... If I get different tones in the same layer... Then I'll say the mural is there. Second specimen, a sky blue tone. Third specimen, an earth color. Fourth, bright fuchsia. And fifth, yes, fifth is a vivid, beautiful gold. My friends, on that wall, under that grimy paint you see, is the last great work of Elias Barron's. The Walls of Jericho. Why, a a fortune, a fortune. Yes, Mr. Hodakis, a fortune. Uh, But before we can announce our discovery, we have a serious problem to solve. The finding of the mural means that we secured the second Bible which led us to it. And we could have secured that only from your client, Ernst Helms, who was wanted for murder. I... I don't understand. It's very simple. We will be charged with working in concert with a murderer unless we apprehend him and turn him over to the police. Yes, but uh, I don't see how we... Oh, well, I I have a plan. Uh, Patricia, you will leave at once for Chicago. Hodeka says that is where Helms called from. 
You will take all of the Helms' luggage, which is now in the storeroom of the Hotel Bolton, uh, including his large trunk. But I... Uh, see here, I... Uh, why? Uh, why must she take the... Because I feel very strongly that Helms will suddenly appear if we move that trunk. Hey, I think we better get out of here. Yeah, let's go. No, no, we don't. Darcy, he's got a gun. So you know. Yes. Well... Yes. I knew when I learned from my secretary that she told you when you called me that Catherine Walsh was coming to my apartment with a book. And you kept me waiting in your office while you went there and killed her for the Bible you finally turned over to me. And you decided to force my hand and find the mural. Uh, Precisely, Mr. Hodakis. And when you made it necessary for me to lie to you about giving the Bible to Helms, I unwittingly signed his death warrant. Now, you knew that Helms was an honest man working for Patricia, and you intended all along to secure that mural for yourself. And so, when Helms couldn't turn over the Bible to you, when you demanded it from him, you were forced to murder him, and his body is now stuffed into his trunk in the storeroom of the hotel. So you've got it all figured out. Well, figure this one out! Darcy, look out! My dear Captain Griffin, was how it came about that the walls came tumbling down, a right over Mr. Hodakis' embarrassed ears. It is too bad he did not live long enough to confess to the murder of Father Walsh, but it's obvious that he killed him to prevent him from giving the Bible in his possession to Patricia. Well, my dear, I think that should take care of Griffin's curiosity. And shall I sign the letter simply Darcy? Uh, no, no, sign it Darcy O'Donnell. Uh, from now on, my pet, I'll be forced to use my last name since uh, you are going to share it with me. And so closes The Walls Came Tumbling Down, starring Keenan Wynn. Tonight's tale of Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Have you discovered, as thousands have, how much Roma wines add to the enjoyment of your meals? How their superb flavor makes special occasion feasts out of everyday meals? Find out for yourself what a marvel worker Roma wine can be in giving any meal new appetizing savoriness. New compliment-rousing zest. Start off the meal with an appetizer, Roma California Sherry. Then place on the table a well-chilled bottle of Roma California Table Wine, delicate sautern, hearty burgundy, or tart, tasty claret. You'll be amazed at the tremendous difference Roma wine makes in the enjoyment of your foods. Don't overlook this easy, inexpensive way to add thrilling extra enjoyment to the coming holiday and to everyday living. Remember, Roma wines cost only pennies a glass. Take a tip from the millions who enjoy Roma wines at meals when entertaining. Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, America's largest selling wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Uh, This is Keenan Wynn. I don't know of an actor in Hollywood who doesn't feel flattered and honored when he's invited to make an appearance on Suspense, and I'm certainly no exception. Next week sounds like a particularly outstanding one because your star will be Paul Muni in a suspense play by one of radio's outstanding authors, Lucille Fletcher. And of course, long before next week has arrived, you will have bought that extra war bond, won't you? Keenan Wynn appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, whom Roma Wine salutes this week on the occasion of their completion of 20 years of motion picture leadership. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Paul Muni, a star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Tonight's entertainment. 
Now, I caution you to subscribe before it's too late, before this broadcast ends, before we 